again today for 91.3 FMWB and watch Battle of the Birds. FM, WBNY, Buffalo's original alternative. Brought to you by the student activity fee here at Buffalo State College. The views expressed on all the various All Talk Monday shows are not necessarily of those of WBNY, the United States government at Buffalo State College, or Buffalo State College itself. Due to the opinionated nature of these programs, listener discretion is highly advised. Yes, there we go. Due to the opinionated nature of this show, namely, well, of me, this is Mike. Hi, Mike. This is Mike on Mike. Mike on the mic. Something like that. I'm still working on a name. If you uh, have gotten a hold of my Twitter feeds, DJ Mike WBNY, uh, also on Facebook, DJ Mike WBNY, uh, go ahead. Come up with some ideas, suggestions. Obviously, my name is Mike. Here we are talking about current affairs, uh, affairs, affairs, events, and so on here within the area. Um, I have an interesting show set up for today. The biggest thing and one that I'm kind of working on right now uh, or kind of waiting on is the fact that we have uh, one of the artists that has been on rotation here for, well, since like, God, was it September or October? I, I don't remember exactly when I started playing him, uh, but it's been a while, and uh, his name is uh, Casey Fallon. He will be calling in today. We're going to discuss his music. We're going to discuss, uh, you know, how he got to the point where he's at, you know, what he's doing right now. I don't know. We may pick up some just random other topics going on, but uh, we'll see about that. Uh, what else we got going on? Of course, as always... Uh, even though you just heard weather talk, we'll probably do some weather here. I've got, uh, towards the end of the show, we, we're supposed to have this day, this day in history, but I haven't received the, uh, the text on that yet. So hopefully, um, hopefully, yeah, we'll see how that goes. Um, what else is going on here? Well, I guess, uh, while I am waiting for the call, I'm not going to say I'm stalling because I don't stall. I've got so many things to talk about. Sometimes it's a matter of choosing which one is it going to be. Uh, we are going to start with, guess what? It's snowing. I know. In case you haven't noticed yet, uh, we're actually getting winter like we're supposed to have. I mean, let's face it. As, as much as I've been hearing about you know the fact that it's snowing all the time, and we talked about it briefly last week. Okay, I talked about, I didn't talk about the fact it was snowing last week. I talked about how it's affecting people last week. And... You know, just, or more importantly, how it's affecting me, the buses, parking, that sort of thing. But, you know, we're still seeing it. We're still seeing, not just the fact that we're still seeing snow, we're still seeing a lot of people talking about the fact that it's snowing. This, folks, is Buffalo. All right. I'm sure there are plenty of you out there who remember this. The fact that winter and the snowfall started sometime around October. All right. And then it would carry on to somewhere around April, May-ish. You know, it was around Easter time. I just remember, you know, I remember as a kid, I mean, we're, 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 we're probably going back. Actually, I wasn't I was still a kid 20 years ago, but we're going back a bit. And uh, many moons ago, you know, I remember, you know, Easter dinner or Easter, Easter dinner, Easter brunch and all that. And... Going out to various, you know, venues for such family events and still, you know, not really being able to go outside. Or if you did go outside, there's still snow on the ground. You still have to be careful. You know, you couldn't be out because you're wearing good clothes and it's snow. And, but it wasn't too bad because it wasn't quite mud yet. And that was Easter, you know. So that's uh, March, April, early March or late March, early April time frame, if I'm remembering correctly. So, you know, the fact that... It's snowing again. Really, really get over it. Okay. <laughs> I mean, this is the way it really is supposed to be. And and as I'm looking at the forecast right here in front of me, uh, let's see, current conditions at the Buffalo Greater Ash International Airport. I can almost talk. Uh, 17 degrees. Let's see here. Actually, let me refresh this page because you never know when the last time it was up here. Oh, no, still, still 17 degrees. I wonder when they got these conditions. Uh, let's see here, or negative 8 degrees Celsius. 
Uh, wind speed, northeast, uh, 10 miles per hour. You know, they should really say whether barometer is rising or falling. It just says the barometer is at 30.04 inches or oh, one or one zero one eight point seven millibars. And, well, that means nothing if you don't know which direction it's going. Let's see here. Humidity, very humidity. Wind chill. Here's an important one. Five degrees Fahrenheit. All right. That's where we're at right now. Uh, this afternoon, snow. Tonight, wintry mix. Tuesday, wintry mix. Uh, we're looking at, you know, a high tomorrow of 23. Uh, Wednesday, chance of snow, high 31. And then Thursday is snow likely high of 20. I mean, that's when after that things start to, I mean, they put it up there. They're guessing. But, uh, yeah, so guess what? It's snowing. And it will continue to snow. So, really, just get over it. Quit posting about it on Facebook and Twitter and stuff like that. Welcome back to what Buffalo really, truly was and should be. Uh, you know, the, the the warm weather was for the southern areas, not for us at this time in the phrase. We should be looking at, you know, actually, that's probably one page I should bring up. What are the uh, slope conditions out at Kissing Bridge? You know, this is ski country right now. I rem That's the other thing I remember. I remember... I remember having cross-country skis and going around uh, Beaver Island State Park because I grew up on the island there. And uh, I know some people is consider when you when they hear the island, they're thinking, you know, Long Island, you know, maybe Manhattan or something like that. Yeah, those are the people who moved in here from the other part of the state. Uh, most people around here think the island is either Tonawan Island or Grand Island, okay? Um, so it was really easy to get over to Beaver Island. You could just do the cross-country skiing thing, obviously good good for fitness and that sort of thing and it was it was you know a lot of fun but that was that was, you had skis why because you actually had snow i mean all these snowmobile clubs around here you know they used to be able to go everywhere <laughs> pretty much but um yeah so enough about that uh what else we got coming up uh last week i spoke about how the fcc was changing what broadband was going to be considered uh, this week, I'm seeing a lot of comments and notes that, and I should find out what the date of this is going to be, uh, they're going to be ruling on the whole net neutrality thing. I think we need a little bit of discussion about what that is, because I still think some people are confused. So we should probably go over that. Uh, I also did a little research into, uh, for the students here on campus, is when are you officially allowed to say your teacher won't be in class? Uh, last week we had, uh, you know, some, I don't want to say issues, but, you know, students and teachers are having some troubles getting in on campus. You know, a lot of times they would send out emails saying, I'm not going to make it, that sort of thing. But, you know, how do you know? And uh, that story is not done. I'm still working on that. But I'll uh, let you know what I've discovered so far. And uh, the interview with Casey Fallon uh, is going to be coming up. So, you know, we've got plenty to talk about. Uh, just so you know, another little uh, programming note that uh, this show, now we might be going over today because I can, uh, but as of at least next week it should be, uh, we are going to have uh, two other, it's only going to be an hour long from this point on. Uh, we have uh, a news program from Sarah Ali, who is our news director here, and then we have another... I don't want to say a PR program because that doesn't sound right. Another, it's another news talk, a more informational type of program, um, but it's from our PR director. That's why I wasn't sure what to actually call it. Uh, she's working on the name of that. It's a short half-hour segment uh, and kind of a prelude to this thing that she's going to be doing later on in the evening. So, um, you know, that's going to be uh, the way things are going to be going here in the upcoming weeks. Thought I'd let you know that. Uh, so you only get to deal with me for another 45 minutes. But uh, for right now, I'm going to uh, get a few things, get a few more things set up. So I grabbed uh, one of our CDs here. Oh, Gooster. We've played them a few times. Uh, this is, must be a new album of theirs. Uh, what do I got queued up? Looks like track number four, Lazy Love. Sounds interesting. Um, from the album Evermotion. So stay tuned. I'll be right back. And right now, here's some Gooster. 91.3 FM WBNY. We're gonna let's not get lazy, love. We're always so lazy, love. We're 
wasting our time When we came up We were amazing love We were amazing love We were feel like i'm saying some of these names saying these band names wrong and uh lazy love actually i like to try i should have done the track before doing it by myself as uh, i am here in studio mostly by myself right now uh working on getting this show out to you i am in the process of uh trying to look a few things up here i was kind of curious to know when that ftc f yeah ftc uh federal telecommunications committee uh report uh vote was going to be coming out on net neutrality and uh, before that comes out i mean you're going to start seeing it especially if you use uh different browsers uh chrome might have the little bits thing out there uh if you use netscape not netscape oh god talk about going back a little bit uh if you use uh, mozilla uh firefox um right at the right at the bottom there the future of the web is at stake the u.s federal communications fcc not ftc that's trade commission Duh. all right there we go the fcc uh communications committee uh, will vote on net neutrality is right around the corner what is net neutrality i'm sure you've heard about this at least once or twice and um yeah, let's, let's let's go over this real quick all right i know you've heard things about pipes and bandwidth and classes and uh, all sorts of stuff I don't know. Let me see if I could possibly make this any easier. I can't. No. <laughs> it's uh here here's what it is. Okay. You've got you go out, you purchase an internet connection, be it from Time Warner, be it from Verizon Files, be it from any company out there, okay? And they tell you you have I think uh, Time Warner is it uh, is like 50 up and 10 down or something like that. That means that, excuse me, wrong way, uh, 50 down, five up, um, something along those lines. Basically put, that means that you should be able to transfer files at the rates of like 50 
uh, megabits per second. Now, that's bits, not bytes, and that's kind of important because, you know, you'll sit down and say, ooh, I should, you know, this, this, if this file is 50 megs in size, which would be a really, really big PowerPoint presentation, maybe? I don't know. Um, it should come down in a second, right? No, not quite. Uh, that's the difference between bits and bytes. Megabytes are bigger. Megabits are smaller. Um, it's going to take a few more seconds than that. Uh, it's actually going to be transferring more like 5 megabits a second. So that 50 uh, meg document is going to take more like 10 seconds. I know, it's still fast, but we're also talking about very small files. Okay, so that's what you purchased. That's what you paid for. That's what you should be at. And then the other side of that is the 5 up. Or which is roughly, you know, 0.5 megs up. Okay? Easy enough, right? Companies are purchasing, I don't want to say the same thing. They are purchasing bandwidth the same way, though. They got a certain speed up and down. Actually, with corporations, it's usually, you know, this, the numbers are the same on both sides. The whole concept is, is yes, businesses may be uploading and downloading. Most people aren't. Um, yes, you hear about file sharers and all that, and yes, those people may be, you know, sending a lot of files out to the internet. But for the most part, most of us, we we consume. We we pull up Netflix. We pull up, you know, our email. We Google stuff. We look at maps, that sort of thing. That's all coming down to our computers. It's not going up uh, out to the internet. The other thing that's going up is the actual, hey Google, I want to know where uh, Topeka is or something like that, you know. What's the uh, carrying capacity of a warthog? Don't ask. <laughs> um, but uh, before we start breaking on to Monty Python skits, I know that wasn't a warthog, it was a swallow, but it's another story. You know, so that's why, you know, you see the, the, small, the large number, small number for most commercials, unless you're talking about Verizon Files, where it's about the same. Yeah, that's either competitive and what they, what they work with there. Businesses are doing the same thing. So for they're usually talking about gigs, not megs. And, you know, they've, they they get a lot of this. It's huge, especially if you're something like um, Netflix has this huge, huge amount that they can send and receive off of. Well, here's the where the whole net neutrality versus tiered Internet comes from. Okay. What tiered Internet is saying is if you're a company that actually utilizes the speed and space that you paid for, you should be charged more. So that's is, we'll put it down in the residential one, we'll look at that 50 and 5 again. If I actually am downloading at 50 and uploading at 5, I am using it for extended periods of time, since I'm using what I pay for, according to tiered internet, that puts me into a higher tier, and I should be charged more. Why? If I'm already paying for the speed, that's supposed to be the speed I want. If I want a faster speed, then I pay for that higher speed or that higher bandwidth. It's all at the same speed. Don't even go there. If they're tra if they're if everything's going to be coming down at pretty much the same speed regardless unless companies are throttling it. And the other thing that the other part of the equation is you know, how many people are trying to pull down stuff at the same time. Yes, that that's, those are the only things that should be slowing down Internet traffic. When you're talking about you, this the receiver, and company A, the sender, if you and 50,000 of your friends are trying to pull from the same source, yes, that bandwidth is being shared amongst all those 50,000 people. Yes, it's going to come down slow, but... That's sort of between you and that company. There should be no intermediate person in the middle of that saying, oh, well, you know, they're utilizing their space, and so we should charge them more so they can get the full access to their speed. No! Ugh. Yes, this is a bit on the disgruntling side because it's, it's, it's nothing more than either a... It's nothing more than a, a money play. I know. Surprise! Or... And B, it's it's also capable of eliminating competition. I mean, if you think about it, who is in charge of this? Okay, the big two in this Buffalo area, Time Warner and Verizon. We throw in Comcast. Yes, I know, there are other companies out there, but for one thing, they tend to be tacked onto one of those other lines. Or there's another, there's another big Internet service provider out here 
um, that that's bringing in the whole fiber backbone, and that's another story altogether. But we're just gonna look at the major ones, um, and then you get further out there. I think I mentioned Comcast. They're not here. They're in other parts, and I think they're trying to buy out. Are they trying to buy out Time Warner? Or is Time Warner trying to buy out them? Either way. You know, we're 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 thinning the herd as far as internet service providers at this point in time. Now, a lot of those guys also distribute content. They have video feeds. They have music feeds. I mean, you could go on to Time Warner and Verizon if you've got their service, and they got pay per view. You've got, you know, 50 music channels, almost like radio stations that you can turn to. Um, gosh, what else? You know, some of them have deals with like ESPN and stuff like that uh, so that you can see some of those other ESPN channels on your computer as opposed to having to actually be at the TV to watch them. So what is to say that they don't turn around and say you know we're trying to provide a video service here and company x is trying to divide provide a video service here what about if maybe we say oh i don't know charge them a little bit more is there anything to stop them they're the ones providing the internet service i know it sounds tinfoil hatish and <laughs> that's not what i'm about in any way shape or form but um but I'm saying that the possibility exists. And because that possibility exists, I mean, for one thing, they'd have to do more than just put it in writing. They would have to sit down and specify how much they're going to find themselves if they break this. I, I, you see how this is starting to sound? I mean, it doesn't. you don't need a tinfoil hat to start doubting how this is going to work out. Net neutrality basically says when you go out and you purchase service, you're allowed to use that service to the extent that it's capable of. If it is capable, if you're buying uh, transfer speeds uh, 50 megs down, then you should be able to get that 50 megs down 24-7. The other reason why companies don't want this is because they, what they call, over-provision. What does that mean? Simply put, it's a bet, a gamble. High, high statistics in their favor that you are not going to be using, you know, your entire bandwidth at any given moment of time. Okay. As a matter of fact, majority of the time you don't, not just you, everyone around you that is on the same service. So if their service is only capable of so much bandwidth, if you are using it and the people in your neighborhood are using it, you're starting to slow it down. Now, again, you sit there and say, hey, I paid for this service. I paid for this speed. Why aren't you providing me, you know, at least a, a large portion of that speed? Their answer, the only answer they have in that sense is, well, you've got so many people in your neighborhood. <laughs> Sorry, not my concern as a consumer. You promised me different speeds and different levels. So what they're basically saying is when people are utilizing what they sold them, they're losing their gamble that people aren't going to do that. So they're going to charge those people more because it's going to cost them, because at some point in time, as more people do it, they're going to have to upgrade the service in that area. And I guess it's the slow trickle to try to get you to pay for that. I, <sighs> hey, I'm all for, I'm all for, you know, capitalism and all that but it's it's it smells that that particular concept if, if that's what you're doing then tell us that let people decide that that's what's going on put it into the contracts put it out there for sure don't sit there and say you're going to have this speed and this transfer rate if all of a sudden you're going to turn around and say oh wow you're you're actually using it oh well we 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 can't have you do that we got to tack on a different fee that means i am not actually getting that speed and you should not be advertising those speeds all right that's my opinion on that still to come <laughs> oops um ooh we got here i just grabbed another uh cd from the pile um 
Ulysses, who is this? A mellow pop indie folk. Yeah, maybe that's what I need right now. A little bit of mellow. Um, as I throw the CD all over the place. How about uh, Rolling? Yeah, that's the first one on the list here. For the CD current swell. Yes, I'm actually putting it in right this second. You're like in my living, not my living room, in my studio right now. Because I'm popping in the CD and and getting it started, so I hope you feel like you're you're, um, you know, part of what's going on here. So yeah, here we go. Ulysses album name's Current Swell. This song is rolling here at 91.3 WBNY. Unless I press the stop button, in which case you won't be hearing it until I do this. <laughs>
like us for a children Cats like us is the place to be Downtown to want to home Main Street Come to Cats Like Us for all your rockabilly and retro clothes. Visit us at 67 Main Street, Tonawanda, New York, or catslikeus.com. Why isn't there anything good on the radio anymore? Nope. Definitely not. Wait, I remember this. I loved this game when I was a kid. Who's playing video game music over the radio? You're listening to WBNY Buffalo, Buffalo's original alternative since 1982, brought to you by the Buffalo State College Student Activity Fee. I'm Nick Leva, and I'm here with Mike Indiano, and thanks for tuning in to our show, The Princess is on Another Station. Sweet. I wonder if they take requests. If you've got an idea of anything you want to listen to tonight, just give us a call at 716-878-5104. Or visit our Facebook page, The Princess is on Another Station. We heard you like games, so we put a game inside your game show so you can play while you play. The Princess is on Another Station, 91.3 FM WBNY. Wednesday nights from 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. All right, we're back. WBNY, 91.3 FM. And let's see here, as long as I get everything working right, I should have on the phone right now, Casey Fallon. Are you there, sir? Yeah, this is Casey Fallon. Ah, I, I apologize for just mispronouncing your name right there. I've done that like, <laughs> I've done that since uh, September, October. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, everybody does it. So. Okay, so it's, uh, say it again then. It's Casey Fallon, yeah. Casey just Fallon. Like it's okay. Fallen, yeah. Just like it's spelled. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so how you been? Uh, yeah, you're yeah. you're out in California. Los Angeles. L A. Yeah. Awesome. And it's like 80 out there right now. <laughs> yeah, it's actually pretty nice weather. So yeah. You just missed. I recently went over the the weather report here, and it's like 12. <laughs> oh my God! Yeah, I know you guys are hating us over here. Yeah, we've had a pretty warm winter actually. So we need rain though. Oh yeah. Here. Yeah, we need rain. It's like dried up over here, so. So which we got our different worldly problems on the west coast. So. I was gonna say, which would you rather have, like cold and snow or drought? I mean. Yeah, I know. It, you know, it's weird though because, in, you know, we're we're spoiled here. Like, if we want to have snow, we can drive like 30 minutes up into the mountains and we can go snow skiing. And uh, you know, it's a nice place to live. And then you can drive 30 minutes and be on the beach, you know, in the sun. So. There you kind go. of got the best of all worlds. But I don't know. I like that snow. And, you know, whenever I visit out that way, I I like it because I don't get to see it here. It's one of those things when you don't have it, you want it, you know. Oh, I, I understand completely. <laughs> I uh, Actually, I spent some time in Colorado, and it was kind of interesting because they had the snow, they had the heat, they had, you know, like maple trees and pine trees, and then they had cactuses. It was like you sat there, you looked around, you're like, what, what? <laughs> <laughs> you get the best of all worlds, yeah. Right? Yeah, it's cool. So now, as I said, I've been saying your name wrong since, you know, I have to, I'd have to look it up. I'd have to pull up my... Uh, my Twitter feed there, because I think I personally have been, uh, you know, tweeting out your album, uh, Atmospheric Disturbances. Mm-hmm. That's the most recent one. That's the newest one, yeah. Okay, and uh, since I'm looking here, it looks like October. When did it actually come out? Uh, it came out in September. Okay. Uh, yeah, and um, y- you know, and the interesting thing about the album is people, well, everyone calls me Casey Fallen. I've just kind of come to accept that but um that's actually the name of the band and it's not my my name is casey but my name's not casey fallen oh and so when we started the band it was casey has fallen that was the name of the band and uh back in the my like the myspace heyday uh everyone used to basically say hey it's casey fallen you know and so it i don't know i started seeing that everywhere and everyone started calling me that so i quickly changed the name to casey fallen okay yeah and, and so that's kind of the the story behind it so then now everyone just calls me casey fallen and it's cool so i just go with it you know that is cool the evolution of uh, the band name right right now how many people are in the band um there's three now um it used to be two um it's doug osborne is the 
he's, he also writes with me, and he's the guitarist and bass player, and uh, he produces the album. And uh, along with me, I produce it too, but um, he does most of the mixing and all that stuff. And now we have a drummer, so um, it's really exciting. So like when we start playing shows, people will actually see a drummer, and for the future album, um, she'll probably be part of that. So we're excited about, you know, how the band is growing. That's awesome. Now, so I mean, a lot of it was uh, electronic, electronic. Well, I mean, I guess where would you put your music? Like a cross between like electronica and. Mm, it's like, um, well, I don't know. I categorize as it as new wave. Okay. Um, you know, it's it, a lot of people say it's post punk, um, but it's guitar, it's live guitar, live bass, and um, electronic drums um, and sampled drums. So, you know, it's like, it's everything, and then keyboards, of course, but, um, yeah, I mean, we're just, we're a mix of everything, really. So, well, it, actually, it, it was simple drums, now you're going to be adding a drummer. So. Right, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, um, for live, it will definitely be a mix of uh, synthetic drums with a live drummer, so that's going to be really neat. It's going to sound great. Cool. Yeah. What are you working on right now? What uh, what projects you got going on? Um, right now, we're actually doing music videos. So um, one music video is actually in post-production, so it should be out, you know, in a, hopefully in a few weeks. And, you know, how that goes, like with editing and stuff. Right. Um, and then after that, it's really just focusing on um, playing shows and maybe setting up a mini tour. So um, that's where we're at. And usually when we play shows is when we start writing new music. So, um Doug has a rule that we have to write like 25 songs before we even sit down and, you know, decide that the album's going to come out. So we literally will make 25 songs. That's what we did with Atmospheric Disturbances. Um, we made 25 songs, and we let our fans decide which songs would be on the album. Oh, wow. Yeah, so um, they all kind of just voted, and what you hear on the album is what the people wanted. So um, it's really cool. So. No, that's a that's that sounds like an interesting process. Was there any songs that you liked but didn't uh, make the fan cut? Yeah, there is actually. There was a couple. Um, it was so long ago now that I probably can't remember the names of them. But um, you know, it was a couple years ago when that process happened. But um, yeah, there was. It was actually like two songs that I thought were amazing and. Um, when I put it before everyone, it really, they fell really low on our list because we did it as like a rating, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. they got rated as to, like these people love this song number one and they love this song the last, you know, and if they didn't make the top 13 songs, then it just got cut. Wow. So, yeah, so, um, yeah, so I was kind of sad. It was like, wow, they got cut, but I kind of stuck to my guns and said, look, this is the way I told myself I was going to do it. I'm not going to cheat them in, so I just left them out. And uh, they might come out on a B-side, you know, EP later or something. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. Yeah, I was, I was just about to ask that. If you, if there's somewhere down the line, you know, while in, in between albums that you're working on, you, you say, hey, we've already got these recorded. We could put this out <laughs> and get a get a get a second album out uh, while you're working on a, on another one. Or actually, you've got uh, two albums out already. Right, two albums. The first one was Orbis Pictus. Um, that was interesting. That was so fun. Um, you know, the, the way Doug and I came together was through a mutual friend, Susan. Um, she was a really good friend of mine. She worked in the music industry. Um, and she threw a party, and I was over there, and um, she said, you need to meet Doug. So, uh, you know, Doug and I started talking, and I actually had this, like, really bad... Um, cassette tape with a demo on it in my car and because he asked me well you wouldn't happen to have anything and I said well I have this terrible demo <laughs> in my car but um he said let's hear it and I go okay so I threw it on and you know he kind of sat there quietly and listened to it I thought oh god he thinks this is terrible you know but no he actually looks over and says you know let's jam and I go all right and uh we start jamming every weekend and lo and behold that turned into an album you know like a year later all of a sudden we had you know made some songs together and and really polished up what i'd already done and um he said let's release this and that's kind of how the band happened so well, that's yeah, that's that's an interesting story it's that's it's cool how you know the the how it all got started like that now 
But let's go back a little bit further. Now, here we are. Uh, we, we've we played your album for... We had that album on for a long time in rotation. And um, and I do believe you said that at one point in time you used to do that. Um, you used to be the one throwing the disc on rotation, you know. And yeah, yeah, actually... That, yeah, a long time ago. Um, yeah, th- when coming out of high school, decided I wanted to be a radio DJ. Um, uh, funny enough, like uh, I used to in LA, we have this big DJ who's still around actually, and his name was the Poor Man, and I thought he was like the coolest thing. He's on uh, a bunch of different shows and stuff like that, TV shows. He made the Love Lines, if you remember that show. So that guy is like. After that, I was like, I gotta be a DJ, you know. And so I went to DJ school and. Um, and then got into the world of uh, trying to be a DJ, which was a lot tougher than I realized. There's a lot of guys out there and, you know, with a lot of experience. And when you're just starting out, you know, you're interning and it was just hard. And, and then the cold reality turned to you're going to have to move out of state if you really want to do this and, you know, get some years under your uh, belt. And I just didn't want to do that. I didn't want to leave California. So... But, you know, but during that time, I did, like, work as an intern at a bunch of different stations, and I actually worked at iRadio LA, um, had my own show, and helped indie bands like myself, and um, it was really cool, you know, like, just, there's so much good music out there. It's amazing. I love college radio, because there's just so much good music out there that um, isn't what the industry is picking out, you know what I mean, which is a shame, because I, I just really don't think the guys out there in the music industry know what they're doing, because there's so much better music than what's being played on mainstream, like your guys' station's amazing, I love it. Well, thank you, we we, we appreciate it, we work hard at it for it, uh, you know, a lot of DJs go, put a lot of hours into, uh, you know, making things what they are, plus, uh, you know, today's our All Talk Monday, so we kind of train them all, and we just don't do, you know, the standard... You know, here's how you play rotation types. We do talk radio, like obviously like right now, and you know other shows like that. And then we got the specialties that play specific genres. But yeah, I mean the music. I mean I just look over at our at our album list right now that we have to play. We've got uh, 62 um, albums of which you know we're required to play three, four, five, six, seven, eight songs out of those 62 albums uh, every hour. You know, wow. Just, and, you know, everyone picks what they like, and, and we do calculate them. I mean, I, I see, uh, I mean, you had made, for one of your albums, you had made the top 100. You made number three, I think it was. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that was, like, thanks to one of your DJs, DJ Lacey Lou. There's a shout-out to her. She's awesome. Um, she was really spinning us, and people liked it, and we were happy. And it was exciting because it was one of the songs that... Um, I don't think any of the other stations played that song, to be honest with you, because uh, I was shocked. I was like, wow, because that's really one of my dark, um, kind of, you know, it was for the the really, you know, big fans of the dark stuff, and she put that out there, and it actually did well. So I was excited about that, like, wow, people actually like these, you know, the kind of private songs, you know what I mean? Now, which song was that? I I, I had my favorites. Which ones was she playing? Uh, that was Who Wants a Broken Boy. Ah, that, you know, I was guessing that one. Okay. Yeah, that's, it, yeah, that's such, it's like a really, it's just not a, it's not a mainstream radio song. At least I don't think it is. It, you know, it's really for the, the Cure type fan, you know what I mean? People who like that kind of music. Um, you know, I, usually, um, at most of the stations that we've played at, what's doing really well is City Lights. Um, mm-hmm. everyone likes that. It's like really poppy and kind of radio friendly. Uh, no, go ahead. No, no, that, that you know, basically that. I, I have my own favorites off of this album, though. You're, really? Yeah, like Lillian's last lyric, I think, is the best song, like personally, okay. because it's a true story, and um, it's you know, and and funny. I just got a review today, you know, like somebody saying, like, I think he goes over the top, like he's being dark just to be dark, and and I laughed at that because I'm not being dark just to be dark that's my true life story and i guess some people just can't wrap their head around that there's people out there who you know grew up extremely poor lived on the street or you know had all these things or were homeless and i've been all those things you know as a child i was homeless and so you know my album comes from a real place it's not contrived 
So, you know, it's funny when I get the reviews, I, you know, I get a lot of snarky comments and stuff like saying like, oh, he's just being dramatic and, you know, and it's like, well, sure, the album's dramatic, uh, you know, but uh, it's real and that's kind of my goal. Right. To give to, you know, let people know out there that are having it tough that, hey, I, I was there too and I, I get it, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, and, and it's and it's and I think that's you. You go back to how a, a lot of people, a lot of the, the 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 names, the labels, aren't picking up the stuff like this because they're looking for their. I think that creates some of the cynicism that you're facing is the fact that you know, you know they're used to the the, the labels and what they feed us, and um, you know, and to find something that's true like that is just not normal. So. I know, and you know, if you look at history, the best bands out there are the ones that break the mold, you know? And so I, I just don't understand why the industry doesn't pick up on that, you know? That the same bubblegum pop songs over and over again, um, sure, some are great, you know, and, and they are what they are, but when you keep just playing that same style over and over again, people are just tired of it, you know? Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. I, I that's why I said I, li I like the college stations and like your guys' station because you really like you know reach down and and show the real artists that are out there and that's awesome. Yeah, I love we, being part of it. And one thing I used to, I I had a show on Sundays I had to unfortunately due to scheduling uh, give it up but my goal was never to play the same song twice. Oh, that's uh, cool. <laughs> so I I mean I played I, I played City Light I think that was one of the first songs that I played but I I went down and into some of these other songs that were in here uh, Fragile and I'd have to look at the Twitter feed exactly to see I think Runaway probably probably right, Steel right. Steel Gray Sky um, I wasn't I, I'll, I'll admit I probably haven't uh, given uh, the actual title track Atmospheric Disturbances uh, a fair shot. Because it's it's kind of slow in a sense. I mean, what do you think of that? Where, how did that song come about? Wait, atmospheric disturbances. That one's actually an instrumental, right? Which is it's like super chaotic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, it was more like a feeling, you know. Uh, I was just you know in the studio and kind of playing with different sounds and stuff, and and. I started thinking about, you know, just all the feeling because that's what the album's about, you know, it's about all the bad things and angst and things that have, I mean, there is some good stories in the album, but most of it's pretty much, you know, it's dark, you know, dark undertones, and so um, I wanted something to just show the angst side of it, not just the sad side of it, you mm -hmm. know, like when someone feels frustrated and fed up, and so that's why it's big and chaotic and, you know, that's that's what that song's about. And then at the end, it it actually has a um, cross-faded uh, secret track that goes into rain um, that goes forever that's just, you know, just thunder and lightning. And it was something I wanted to do for the CD. So I don't think it translates very well when it's just an MP3 because then it's just a long, you know, uh, it seems like an extra long song with a lot of just uh, rain and thunder in it. But um, got criticism for that, too. But it's like, no, it was supposed to be a secret track, so... But um, yeah, that's what that one's about. It's just it's just about showing that that frustration inside and showing it with sound, you know, and music. That's good. painting a picture strictly with the uh, uh, not the lyrics, but with the instrumentals and uh, the sounds that were that you were listening to, as opposed to right, if exactly. that's spelled out for you. Maybe that's their problem. They just didn't understand how to listen to the story, as opposed to having it you know told to them. But um, yeah, I think that's what it is, and you totally nailed it. It's um, it's a story. That's that's what the, it really is meant to be sat down and just listened to and and immerse yourself in it. And and that's me. I love music. I am the type of person where I have to have my music time. Like, um, but when I'm writing, I stay completely away from music. So I'm like starved for music usually after my writing period. Like, uh, Doug and I both have that rule that once we say, okay, pen's going to paper and we're going to write songs, no more radio, no more music at all. We don't listen to anything. We just write. And so when I come out of that phase and I say, okay, I'm done writing, um, I am, like, starved for music. I'm, like, looking for every band, you know what I mean? Like, just got to have it. And I will just lock myself in the room and, you know, turn off the lights and put on headphones and listen to, like, music for hours. And I love that. To me, it's like a book. I, I'd rather do that than read a book. You know what I mean? 
Yeah. No, that's awesome. Now, and along those lines, though, I mean, uh, is this like your sole thing right now? Do you have do you, do you have to work outside of here or? This is it? my sole thing, actually. For the first time in my life, um, this is what I do for a living. So I'm really excited about it. Like, um, it's it's hard, but um, I'm making it. And they, I started my own label, so you know that's like I actually turned it into a business. So. Um, I'm doing okay, but, you know, I, I got to get out there and tour, and that's, you know, today where the money is at is being on the road and mm-hmm. playing the show. So um, we're getting there. But, yeah, I'm happy to say that this is my job right now. So. Well, congratulations. That's yeah, I mean, thanks. there's a lot of artists that are striving for that, for you to sit there and to be able to say you, you, you did that. Do you think that uh, you've made it? I mean, do you think that's – is there another goal above this? Oh, made it? Yeah, no. Um, You know, I think making it is when you can, I don't know, it's hard to say. Like, making it, what is making it, really? You know what I mean? Like, what is that? Like, I, it's kind of hard to even think about what that is. To me, is it famous? Because to me, being famous isn't a really big deal. Um, Actually, I think it's a curse. That that's a curse for most artists. Your freedom's taken away. People are really mean out there, and they start to you know pick at people who are successful, which is sad. I hope society gets over that one day. Um, you know, and bully, and that's one thing I'm adamantly against. I don't like online bullies. It's just the worst. Uh, bullies in general, I should say, are just the worst. And um, but I don't know what is success in, in the music industry. Uh, I guess maybe if I got like a worldwide presence, like, you know, like I was being played everywhere uh, on a consistent basis, I think that's like what I want. That would be awesome. Okay. And yeah, that's kind of, that's what I was kind of looking for is, you know, what, you know, everyone has a different, different definition of what uh, making it is. You know, I had a poster on my wall that, you know, success is how you define it. And that's kind of wondering what, you know, what your definition of, you know, being successful and making it in the industry. And it sounds like, uh, you know, being known around the world. Yeah, that is because I guess that's it. I mean, think about it, though. There's a lot of bands out there that are actually really, I would say, famous in their region, but yet other regions have no idea who they are but you know they're successful and they make a lot of money and you know what i mean but like and i think a lot of people think that like the only way you can be successful as an artist is if you're like the beatles or something like that and that's unrealistic i mean you know especially today what's the call for the music industry is so tough but um i don't know What's it called? But yeah, I guess it, it would be that. I would like to just be able to travel all over the world and be able to tour and stuff like that. And you gotta make a lot of money to be able to do that. You know. Right. So. Awesome. Hey, uh, can you hold on a minute? I gotta take care yeah. of a few things, and uh, we can get right back to you. Um, when I come back in, I I'm, I'm I'm thinking about playing a track here uh, from your album. Is there one that you'd love me to play? Um. Yeah. Can you play Lillian's last lyric? That's that's my fave. I love that song. Certainly. Um, so let, we're going to take care of a few things. Uh, when we come back, Lillian's last lyric and a little bit more from Casey Fallen. Yep. Here on 91.3 WBNY. Great time to have equipment failure. <laughs> Wait, what was that? It's a great time for equipment failure. Oh, no. FM, WBNY, Buffalo's original alternative is throwing Battle of the Bands at Buffalo Ironworks on April 25th. We are accepting submissions now. The deadline is March 8th. No covers, must be original music, one submission per band, three songs per submission. Digital files can be emailed to WBNY local music director at gmail.com, subject line battle submission, or mail us a CD. Address information available at facebook.com slash WBNY local. Don't forget the deadline's March 8th, so submit your stuff now for WBNY's Battle of the Bands on April 25th, brought to you by 91.3 FM WBNY. Ninety one point three FM WBNY. Buffalo's original alternative. Brought to you by the student activity fee here at Buffalo State College. 
The views expressed on all the various All Talk Monday shows are not necessarily of those of WBNY, the United States government at Buffalo State College, or Buffalo State College itself. Due to the opinionated nature of these programs, listener discretion is highly advised. Casey Fallen 
Well, I have Casey. Do you actually go by your last name at all? Yeah, I do. Like I said, everyone calls me that now, so that's exactly. <laughs> yeah, I, when people say Casey Fallen, I, my head turns now. It's been, you know, <laughs> ten years of it. But yeah, um, it's funny because I try to like you know because it is a band, and so it, it bothers me because Doug is you know a huge part of this band, you know, and so. I don't want people to think like, oh, it's a sol- like a solo artist, you know. So I try to mention it like, hey, Casey Fallen's a band, but sure, I'm I'm Casey Fallen, I'm the lead singer, so that's fine, you know. Okay, uh, but you said that uh, that's actually not your last name, though. No, no. And who are you, or do you not want to? Do you not want anyone to know that anymore? Yeah, yeah, I don't think I want to put my last name on Okay, there, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I have Casey from Casey Fallen, um, and who works with Doug, and the drummer who is... That's Kristen. Kristen, so, uh, the yep. up-and-coming drummer. Yep. And uh, we just, like I said, we just played uh, an album, or an album, <laughs> a song off of their latest album, which came out in, I think you said September, August, September time frame? Yeah, it was September. Uh, Atmospheric Disturbance, that was uh, Lillian's last lyric, uh, in many parts a true story written and, you know, produced and put out there by you guys, which is uh, incredible, you know, because obviously you're sharing a bit of yourself there. Uh, before or while I was uh, at break, we are doing some announcements there, uh, I don't know if you heard, we have a Battle of the Bands coming up. And, oh, no, I didn't hear that. That's going to be... Oh, yes. Uh, it's... God, the sheet used to be sitting right here. I don't know where it, where it went to. But uh, in a couple, in a month or two now, we're going to have a, a big Battle of the Bands thing. And I try never to remember memorize anything because the memory always fails me. So I always rely on pieces of paper. So <laughs> you and me both. So I'm like the worst with like names. Oh, my God. It's terrible. But uh, but yeah, we got uh, we got judges. I think one of the prizes is like six hours of, of studio time. And, wow, yeah, that's cool. Uh, t-shirts, uh, other forms of merchandise, you know, stuff that can be turned into merchandise for fans and stuff like that. So, did you ever do battle of the bands at all, or have you have no, you done any type I, of competitions? No, I've never done the competition thing. Um, no, I played shows, you know, just uh, yeah, never done that. Now you've been obviously in a lot of uh, venues. Uh, now here we are in Buffalo. Granted, we stream on the web. We got the TuneIn app, uh, or you can just go to the website, uh, WBNY's website, and click on the play now, and you can hear it anywhere across the world. So it's not like people who are listening to the show can't or aren't in LA. But you know, for the most part, I'm not sure if people necessarily know the venues out there. But do you have a favorite place that you like to play out there, or are they all good? I mean, I'm sure they're all good in their own ways, but um, yeah, you know, it there's a lot of different places to play out here, and it just depends on the mood you're in. You know, so, sometimes I think the smaller, like the smaller clubs, are the best because. Then you get to, like, interact with the fans and hang out with everyone, and it's just, I don't know, it's just not as much pressure on the band. You know, when you play these bigger places, there's a lot more to do, like, sound check-wise and light show, and um, and don't get me wrong, those are fun, too, but it's a lot more work. So I I tend to like the the smaller gigs, like, you know, the Roxy, um, those kind of places. We played... BB Kings, um, that was pretty incredible. We played with the band Sick Puppies. I'm sure people have heard of that band. They're pretty mainstream now. Um, that was a pretty incredible show. Um, but yeah, I mean, as for favorite, like I, I usually like the smaller clubs, and, and you know, mm-hmm. but um, you know, the big ones are they are what they are. I guess what's it called? It's a lot more work for me. <laughs> well, when you know. The job. Yeah, once you uh, if you if you make that uh, that that famous setting of being known worldwide, and you're going to have to uh, you know do some of those bigger events, you'll also be I able know. to have people yeah. to help you with that. <laughs> right, exactly. Well, it's a huge, it's a bigger crew. I think you know for right now, I think the reason why it feels that way to me is because I can't afford all those people yet. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like everything I do myself, and that's the thing about you know. When you make it your job, then it is a job, you know what I mean? And so 
I'm everything right now, and I don't have the extra, you know, resources to be able to have, you know, roadies and a light crew. And um, although I do know a light guy that you know can help me out and stuff, but it, you know, it costs and mm-hmm. it's it's a lot of money. So if I'm going to play a bigger place, um, there's not that thirty guy crew behind me that you know comes in and sets everything up and. You know, and I just go and practice in the back and hang out. No, it's just not like that. So I think, yeah, if I became big enough to where I was playing the world, I would probably have enough money to, you know, have a crew, and I would probably think the bigger shows are, like, amazing. You know what I mean? Right, I think right. right now it's just because I, I'm not that big yet. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, I'm an, I'm an indie artist, so, you know, it, it is what it is. But I, I enjoy being an indie artist. I think... Um, Right now, the freedom of being able to write what I want to write, not having somebody tell me what to write. I think that's what a lot of people don't realize about their favorite mainstream band, is they don't write a lot of their own music. Um, there's a lot of ghostwriters out there writing people's music. And I'm not going to name names, but I know for a fact many major bands um, that didn't write their hit song, you know, and uh, people are, I see them everywhere saying, oh, there's such an amazing artist, and that song they wrote well sorry they didn't write that song but you know that's where the industry is gone and i i personally think it's sad honestly isn't that a know. category in in one of the the award shows is for the songwriter as opposed to the performer right yeah they have that too but you know they they have they have people saying that they wrote the song and they didn't really write the song you okay. know what i mean because there's a non-disclosure contracts that they sign and you know I don't know. I don't know exactly how all that works, but I know the people, the other indie artists who wrote the song. Um, because, you know, the indie artists, when you've been in it for as long as I have, you start to know all the indie artists, you know, the big mm-hmm. ones at least that other people know. And you understand where people are making their money. And a lot of indie artists are making more money on selling their songs to the record labels than they are on their own albums. And that's a problem. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You know, I, you reminded me to start, start talking about indie artists uh, and how people thought that song, uh, uh, Lillian's Last Lyric, there was uh, uh, kind of darker. I grew up on The Cure and Nine Inch Nails and, and bands like that. So that was oh, great. That was peppy. So <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but um, oh, there's something else I was going to ask you uh, along the lines you're talking about. Oh, I was going to say, you know, I, I know within like uh, a lot of the the, the pop scenes and, and maybe even I don't want to say the hip hop, but you know some of the pop type scenes that I can see that there's not. I know in like country music, which I don't know where you sit with country music. I know there's a lot of artists out there who do talk about how they go and they songs. That that have been submitted to them and they've been written to them because they seem to be more they seem to be more open about that process um, and, and letting their fans know that you know these songs that I'm singing you know some of these came from somebody else and they even have a, you know a whole compilation of singer song you know here's a singer and songwriter you know doer I've always wrote you know this guy's written songs for me and he's wonderful you know that's cool see I, yeah I don't really know a lot about the country like you know we don't have a lot of country stations in Los Angeles so it's not really music I know very well mm-hmm. um but what you're telling me, that's awesome. Like, I wish that was the way it was for everyone. Now, if an artist came out and told me, yeah, you know, I worked with so-and-so and, you know, this is their... That I would have the utmost respect for that because, you know, that's two artists collaborating. Nothing wrong with that. Right. But when I, I my problem with it is when you're deceiving the public, mm-hmm. you know. Um, you know, you can't, you can't go out there and say... Yeah, I wrote this song and da da da, and like I'm about to like I gotta not say anything because I'm gonna give it away who I'm talking about. But yeah, <laughs> um, I'm serious. This person's like super famous, and and they were on talk shows saying lots of different things about how they wrote the song, and I knew for a fact they didn't, and I was just like I was gritting my teeth going, that's just wrong, you know? Like I don't know. I wish the music industry would just like reach out and just start. Just start getting some indies and stuff and stop regurgitating all this old music. It's, you know, I don't know. They're making it more about, like, money than about art and music, and that, to me, is a shame. It shouldn't be that way. I don't know. Well, hopefully, uh, you know, I think it seems to me that college stations are starting to make sort of resurgence these days. 
Yeah. Um, they're starting to come out more and more, and I think you know people are. We're, I think a lot of them are starting to get you know able to do more transmitters. I know at one point in time. Um, and I'm, I'm really carbon dating myself with this one, but you know the college stations where I first went to school, um, we basically had a wire that went through the campus and like into dorm rooms. And you took like uh, you know like an alligator clip and, and clipped one end to the wire and one into your antenna on your radio, and uh, that's how you could get the campus radio station. Wow. Now, you know, oh here at uh, WBNY, we got, you know, we're over a 1,000 watts here. So it's not, like, huge, huge, like, you know, the commercial stations. But, uh, right. you know, it's still 25, can, on a good day, 25 to 50 miles. That's pretty good, though. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah, that, that's awesome. It's reaching people. And that, I'm serious. That, well, it's the same thing around here. Like, KCRW is, like, our, um, you know, NPR station. And that is more popular than you know, most of the mainstream stations. Um, so, you know, it just shows. You're right. It's, I think it's turning that way. People are just hungry for real artists and, you know, new stuff. And I think it's kind of cool to be able to actually go out to a show and meet the artists that you like. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So you're not barred from them. Like, if you come to a Casey Fallon show, you know, I'm I'm right there. You know what I mean? You can come up and hang out with me, and I'm like, I'm so happy to meet you. It's like really cool. I, I enjoy that. That's my favorite part of shows, actually. Well, I'll, I'll admit, um, you know, when I got started here at the station, and you know, I started, I, I created my Twitter accounts, and I started tweeting out the songs that I was playing. You know, I, I won't say, unfortunately, you weren't the first one to reply to that, but. Uh, I don't think I played one of your songs yet, but as soon as I had and you saw it and I saw the, you know, you retweeted it or favorited it, I was just like, wow, you know, somebody's paying attention and it's the artist <laughs> itself. I don't think I could play a song from some of the big names and, and get that unless, the, you know, their management team is, really cares. But, you know. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, but I do care. That's the thing. You know yeah. what I mean? Is like I, I do care. And you know what's funny is I actually got guff from fans about – because I literally go down a list that I get from the publicist, you know, our publicist that says, here's the stations that are playing you, and it'll tell us, you know, what rotation we're being played in and, and all that great stuff. So I literally go through it, and I don't want to, like, you know, swamp my Twitter and Facebook and stuff with just, you know, station thank yous, but I do make it a point that every day I put one station that's playing us, and I thank them. Um, and, you know, I go and I look up their station and find out, you know, about them and about their DJs because I care and I think it's amazing that they're playing me and I love that um, but believe it or not one station a day and still somebody who says oh you know why do you put those every day and it's like <laughs> because I'm lucky to be played on the radio and I care yeah you know? you're happy you, 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 that's, I mean, that's the whole point right that's why you're doing what you're doing because you like your music you like getting it out there and you're happy that the stations are doing that for you Absolutely, and I am so grateful to you guys. I mean, it's just awesome, and I hope to get out to New York sometime and to be able to just play in that area and maybe even do a show for you guys. That would be so awesome. I would love that. Uh, we would definitely, definitely have to, uh, you know, work on something like that if you can ever make it out this way, you know. Uh, that's, I mean, maybe your someday your mini tour will become a bigger tour and uh, I can definitely right? come I out hope. here. Um, but you know what? I think uh, I've taken up enough of your time today. Uh, I think we've been uh, almost an hour now, uh, close to 45 minutes. So uh, thank you very much for calling in today. I know we had a little bit of an issue getting started. Uh, we got those resolved, and you were able to uh, get through, and I was able to chat with you, which was great. Yeah, it's great meeting you, and I love your show. Thank you so much for having me on. It really is awesome. Hey, I appreciate it. Not a problem anytime, and definitely, if you're ever in Buffalo, um, even if you can't do a, a show here at Buff State, you know, you you definitely can, uh, you know, come down to the radio station here, and uh, I mean, with this, if it's within the next couple of years, you know, myself and. Uh, uh, Lulu Lou will be uh, around. So <laughs> hey, we will make it a goal for sure. We would love that. Oh my God, we would. And yeah. if you make it down during one of these shows, I'll be I'll be happy to have you on, like in the chair next to me. You know, <laughs> that would there. be awesome. Yes, in so. studio, that would be really cool. But we look forward. Yeah, and to I just want to say to everyone, thank you so much for all the support. All you fans out there, all you guys have stuck with us for like some of you have been with ten years. And I want to say thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. It's been a real struggle. And please support indie music, not just me, 
support all indie artists because we really work hard to bring our music to you. And support this station because they're bringing you guys, like, really good music. Not just me. I mean, tons of good music. Please tune in. Awesome. So thanks again. I appreciate it. Hey, and thank you also for uh, calling in. And, uh, and yeah, we look forward to the video. Do you, you, when did you say it was going to hit? Um, we are you. basically putting it out hopefully in, like, two or three weeks. I'm literally editing it right now. Right now. So like I told you, <laughs> I do everything myself, you know what I mean? Like, as right. much as I can by myself. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, hopefully we'll have it out um, soon. And then after that, we're going to be working on a really big um, music video, which will be for City Lights, which is going to be a bigger production. So, oh, wow. I can't wait yeah, to see so that. Yeah, so all one. that stuff's coming, guys. <laughs> it's all coming. So next couple weeks. Now, where would you be distributing that? Uh, just YouTube or, I mean, have you seen uh, We have a Vivo artist account that's waiting for us to upload our stuff. Okay. Um, we actually tried to put our first music video out there and Hollywood? Vivo rejected it because <laughs> way back in the day when we created that um, that music video, it was the first HD music video ever made. Um, mm-hmm. There was no way to get it up online. Like, it was literally on a hard drive. Um, we tried to get it to MTV, but they were like, we're going to keep your hard drive. And it was an expensive <laughs> hard drive, and we were like, oh, no. It was so tough. Um, but anyways, we made that video, and we did the wrong thing and put the writing on the video where you put the name of the band, and we didn't know you weren't supposed to do that. Ah. Um, and that got it rejected, like, everywhere. So that one you can only find on YouTube. But, okay. Um, that but was yeah, Hollywood, so this, though, right? Yeah, Hollywood. So these ones are going to be done right. So they will be up on Vivo, and hopefully it'll go up on MTV and all those other places. So. Awesome. Yeah, I did see you had a MTV artist page also. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, MTV.com slash artist slash Casey Fallen. Um, and, of course, you got your own website. Yep. And That's CaseyFallen.com. Yeah. Yep. And <laughs> do, you, uh, do, you, do you maintain your MySpace page? Is that still out there? <laughs> um, You know, I do go there and post things from time to time, but I don't know. I don't think anybody even pays attention anymore on there, which is sad. Because we had, like, 15,000 followers on there before it, like, you know, self-destructed. Right. (laughs) So, yeah. So, um, yeah, it's still there. I do post things um, from time to time, but I'd rather people just go over and follow us on either Twitter or Facebook. Facebook, mostly, I'm I'm on there, like, all the time. I'm assuming they can just find you with Casey Fallon. Yeah, exactly. And same with Twitter. They'll find the artist page. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you very much. And uh, like I said, I'm glad you could call in. And we look forward to seeing all the stuff you're coming out with and, you know, maybe a tour someday. And definitely the new album with the new drummer. Can't wait to hear that also. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and make sure to go pick up our new album. It's in Target stores now. So you can actually get it at Target and um, Amazon.com. So get our CD. There you go. Get <laughs> all right. Thank Target. you so much. You you're have welcome. a great day. Yep, you too. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. All right, folks, that was Casey Fallen. I've been saying it wrong all these, all those months. That was kind of silly for me. Um, and that's, uh, you know, that's going to pretty much wrap things up for me. We got some more music coming up here for you, uh, shortly. And then, gosh, I'm not even sure what's coming up next. We've, uh, there's been a few changes here programming wise as, as this new semester kicks in here about state. So as far as the next show, I know somewhere along the lines, we've got the video game news coming in. We have, uh, not, no, Buffalo Blitz moved to later on in the evening. I forget what's, uh, God, what's next? What's next? I was hoping somebody would pop in hearing me say what's next, but I guess not. But for now, some more music. And then uh, I'll talk radio. We'll continue on with uh, uh, I'll talk money. We'll continue on with a few more shows, as of course you know. And you know, keep it here at ninety-one point three FM WBNY. So this is band called Ramonskis. They were originally polka band. But now they played then this punk rock music. I don't know, but. The sedated polka we play for you in 24 verses. I hope you like. Chris, drums. Mike, bass. Tim.
Rhythm Guitar Joe Keys Let me hear horns Twenty, twenty, twenty-four hours to go oh, oh. I want to be sedated Nothing to do, nowhere to go oh, 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 oh. I want to be sedated Just put me in the wheelchair and take me to the show hey! Hurry, hurry, hurry I'm so sedated